In this video, our goal is to use recurrence relations to find explicit formulas for sequences. And the sort of brute force approach to this is to just create the sequence in expanded form and then try to recognize a pattern that allows you to, to develop an explicit formula. So we're going to do expanded form on each of these as a first step. So this first one, a1 is equal to 3. Let's find a2 by using the recurrence relation. a2, if I look at my recurrence formula, is going to be negative 2 times a 2 minus 1. In other words, a1. It's negative 2 times a1. I already have a1, so I get negative 2 times 3. a3, plug in n equals 3 to the recurrence relation. I get negative 2 times a2. So this is a negative 2 multiplying the previous answer. And I'm going to go ahead and move the 3 out in front just because it's a more standard form for this. And I'm going to write it like this. So I'm just tacked on another factor of negative 2. a4, plug into the recurrence relation, plug in n equals 4 in there, I get negative 2 times a3, in other words, negative 2 times the previous answer. And now I can see the pattern. I'm just tacking on a factor of negative 2 every single time I generate a new term. So I have some starting point, a1 equals 3. And then every successive term is just tacking on a factor of negative 2. I think I can write the explicit formula now for a n. It's got to start with a 3. I need to tack on a factor of negative 2 every time n ticks up by one integer. And one way to get the starting point right is to say, OK, we're going to start at n equals 1, but I want the original exponent of, of negative 2 to be 0. So check it out. If I put n equals 1 into this exponent, I get negative 2 to the 0. I get a1 equals 3, plug in a 2 for n, and I get 3 times negative 2 to the 1. In other words, 3 times negative 2. Plug in n equals 3 and verify that it works, and I get 3 times negative 2 squared. So that's the same thing I got when I was expanding it. So I could rewrite the sequence as braces 3 times negative 2 to the n minus 1, where it's understood implicitly that I'm plugging in n equals 1 first, as I've said before, it's okay to start a sequence at n equals 0 as long as you let the reader know that it's starting in a slightly unusual place. So let me look at that real quick. This answer is just as right. Let's look at number b. I want this sequence to start at 1, and then my nth term is 3 more than my n minus first term. So a1 is 1. a2 I could get by plugging into the recurrence relation, and I get 3 plus a1. And a1 is just 1, so I end up with 4 for that. a3, I plug in n equals 3 into the recurrence relation, and I get 3 plus a2. a2 was 4, so I end up with 7. a4, I get 3 plus a3. a3 was 7, so I end up with 10 for this. And then I realize my sequence is just 1, 4, 7, 10. Um, so how do I write this sequence as an explicit formula? I need to get it to to add 3 every time n ticks up by 1. And the way you do that is by putting in a 3n. So if I plug in n equals 1, I get a 3 out of that. n equals 2, I get um, a 6 out of it, and so on and so on. So the only question left is how do I get the starting point to work correctly? So if I'm starting at n equals 1, but I know I have to get a1 equals 1, then I'm going to put a minus 2 on this thing, and I think it'll work. Just verify real quick that it works. When I sub in n equals 1, I get 3 minus 2. There's a1. Plug in n equals 2. I get 6 minus 2. That's 4. So that checks out. Plug in n equals 3. I get 3 times 3 is 9 minus 2. That gives me 7. And so that's working out. So I could write my sequence in braces like that, 3n minus 2, where it's implicitly understood I'm starting at n equals 1. So this first example, uh, number a, was a geometric sequence. That means I multiply by the same amount every time. And that amount was negative 2 in that example. And in part b, it was an arithmetic sequence. I was adding the same amount every time, and that amount was 3. Problem c is not geometric or arithmetic. So geometric and arithmetic sequences are very common, but they're not everything. And I want to just go ahead and write this in expanded form. So I'm going to plug in n equals 2 into the recurrence relation, and I get 2 times a1, which is 2 times 1.
plug in n equals 3 into the recurrence relation, and I get 3 times a2, so 3 times 2 times 1. And I think I'm seeing a pattern. So a4 is 4 times a3, and I get 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So what's the pattern? It looks like I'm producing factorials. So a4 is 4 factorial, a3 is 3 factorial, and so on. So that means that a n is just going to be n factorial. That's how you find the nth term. So I could write my sequence as the sequence n factorial, where it's implied here, but doesn't hurt to say it explicitly, that n equals 1, 2, 3, and so on.